Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I would like to show you how you can install FreeBSD and also install some FreeBSD packages without access to the internet. Okay, let's do this. Of course we need the ISO image for FreeBSD. We can get this directly from the FreeBSD project. So in this case I'm running things on a Mac and I'm going to select the AR64 and I'm going to download the DVD one. Once this is done, you can look here at an additional project that I've created called FreeBSD MK Repo. It's a FreeBSD uh, Haskell program that I created to download packages from the FreeBSD repository and create your local package repository. Here I've cloned already the repository and let's just have a, a quick look at the uh, at the source code and here you can see it's uh, yeah it's typical Haskell code the important thing is that it has two parameters the config so dash dash config or dash c which uh, where you can specify the config yaml file and has a dash dash out or dash o where you output a file um, that is going to have the commands to download the packages by default, it takes config YAML and outputs to fetch.sh. So let's have a look at the config.yaml. Here um, you need to configure the package path. In this case, it goes to the package FreeBSD for version 14. This is for 14.3, the current one. And I, we're going to pull packages for ARCH64 from the quarterly branch. To process the de package dependencies, we're going to use a package site underscore AR, arch64.yaml, which we need to fetch. Below here, you have a list of all the packages that I want to download and um, yeah, uh, create in my repository. There are quite a lot of them, and um, they are packages that I myself use quite often, and uh, yeah, therefore, I want to have them handy in a local repository. Let's try to get the package site.yaml. For that, I've created a very nice script called getpkg.sh. Here you can just again point to the same repository. This is FreeBSD 14 ARCH64 quarterly, and we need the package site.pkg. The rest of the commands are there to create the package site.yaml. Let's just run it, get package site, and magic will happen. Once this is done, we have the package site.yaml file. There it is. That in this case, I'm going to rename it for to package site.yaml to package site arch 64. I had already this package before, no problem. But this is the file name that the config YAML is going to need. Next, we just run a stack run. And stack run is going to take this package uh, site, uh, ARCH64 YAML, and uh, along with the package lists that you provide, fetch, uh, compute all the dependencies that are needed to install all those packages and generate the commands to download them. So let's do a stack run. It's already done, and let's have a look at the fetch.sh. In this case, as you can see, it just does a wget for all the individual packages. In this case, 7-zip, 86-box, and etc. etc. Um, so, how many lines do we have? Fetch um, here, about 2007 packages. All right, so the next step is create a directory. Let's call it just repo. And execute the fetch.sh. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. Okay, I've just downloaded all the packages and created, uh, renamed the directory to repo arch64 because I also want to create uh, repositories for amd64. You can see all the packages are basically in and the next step that we need is to create a pkg repository. For that, 
let's go one step backwards and let's look at the directory Mac OS. And we see that uh, there is a PKG file inside. This is basically the FreeBSD package manager that I've recompiled to run under FreeBSD. If you do this process under a FreeBSD machine, free, the PKG binary is already inside and you don't need to recompile it. If you are running under Linux, well, you need to compile PKG for Linux. Please note that yes, you can compile PKG, but you cannot meaningfully install any package because uh, it's not a FreeBSD machine. No problem, because I just want to create a repository. So let's go back to the previous directory and let's create a repository. In this case, I'm going to execute macOS pkg repo dot. And now the repository is created. Once of, uh, so we can see that this is uh, done because we have a package site. Uh, we have a couple of package site files here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's have a look at how much does this occupy in the disk and it's about 6.6 .6 gigabyte. The next step we need to run is to create an ISO image to burn on a CD or a DVD depending uh, on the size of your repository. If it is large enough, you could eventually even burn it on a Blu-ray. No problem. So for to create the ISO image, I'm going to use the MK ISO FS. Let's um, do it. So MK ISO FS. Let's output to the uh, previous directory. Let's call it FreeBSD. Let's call it repo a arch 64 .iso. That should be enough for now the Rockridge extensions and the Juliet extensions and the volume, let's call it 143 underscore a arch 64 and let's run the command. Okay, I forgot to add the dot, so now let's run the command. All right, so the ISO file is created, so we can go back here and we we can see that the we can see that we have an iso file here very good we are now ready to start um, creating a new uh, machine for that i'm going to imagine although i have internet connectivity i'm going to imagine i have absolutely no internet connectivity We don't add new users to the system because this is just for demonstration purposes. And we shut down the machine. We go to the configuration of the machine and we go to the USB drive and we clear the previous uh, ISO disk and add the new one in the repository, the ARCH64 repository and save. And now just uh, before starting, immediately after starting, we need to press the escape key because we need to select the boot device. Otherwise, we'll be, we are going to be booting into the wrong device. So let's start the machine and press escape. Here we go to the, to the BIOS of the QMU and we go to the boot maintenance manager. Look at... Uh, boot options and change the boot order. Here we're going to move the FreeBSD up and just save the settings. Configuration changed, save, yes, and now exit and we can now also exit from here, go to the boot manager and select FreeBSD. Now we log into the machine, so we type in root 
and the next step we need to mount a disk so we do a mount dash t cd 9660 and a dev cd 0 slash mnt so if we go to the slash mnt we have the files here now we would need to start installing package but package is not installed so if we type in package it's going to try to download it from the internet so uh, since we would not be having internet connectivity we need to find another way to make package work and uh, for that we go to the main directory we can see here that in the main directory we have a copyright file and a couple of more things that's all fine and we can untar the pkg from the cd-rom or from the dvd let's do it so tar cvzf from slash mnt pkg dash two and let's go uh oh, sorry not c it's expand not compress so xvzf okay so it's expanded and in, uh, created a compact manifest and a manifest which we can just remove so compact manifest and uh, plus manifest and now this should look like before but pkg should now be working awesome now we need to configure the package um, to be pointing uh, to the cd so let's edit etc pkg freebsd and here let's just add let's uh, first disable what is there and let's add a freebsd repo and let's select an url to be file slash mnt and now enabled yes we save this and pkg update there we have there we have it so let's try to do a pkg install midnight commander and vim of course and look at the speed very fast as one last thing let's uh, just install uh, icewm because we can pkg install xrdp xorg icewm and icewm dash extra themes and there we go really fast because it's not taking from the internet but it's taking from the local cd so this is really running in real time i'm not making it faster let's do a sysrc xrdp sysman enable yes and xrdp enable yes so, um, before doing the service start let's do a vim start wm dot sh and we add here a bang to bin sh and let's just put um, export path s bin uh, let's put slash bin uh, let's put the user s bin user pin the user local s pin user local pin and uh, yeah, why not root pin and now um, exec ice wm session this file needs to be executable so start wm and service xrdp start xrdp sysman start okay the last command was like this um, and uh, yeah we can just connect it over rdp for that we need the ip address this is uh, 100234 so we get the windows app we add a new pc 
let's put 10 0 2 34 under display i don't like to start it in full screen mode so we take this out add and start it we add the credentials root continue continue and there we are let's just very quickly configure this to my favorite layout the theme x xp new awesome x term is there and let's put a large font mc dash u and we have it running great so that's it for today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments or suggestions please use the space down below one short comment before um, i end the video as you have might notice lately i've not been able to post so many videos because i've been quite busy with business travels hopefully at about september this year things should start to get back to normal in any case if you have suggestions for additional content or for some additional videos please use the space down below i would be very happy thank you for stopping by and i hope to see you again real soon thank you take care and Bye-bye.